Hello, welcome back to Retro Break, or should I say Retro Break Gameplay, as this is going on my second channel. So, I'm really excited because I'm going to be doing a Let's Play today of a game called Upixo in Action Mission in Snowdrift Land. And I'm sure if you're anyone who watches YouTube videos, you've seen Nick Robinson's latest video about this game, and I just had to come and check it out for myself because I was a huge Nintendo fan back in the day, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, this game completely passed me by, so. When I found out that such a game existed, I was so excited to give it a go myself. So I downloaded Flashpoint, I think the software is called, and I got the beta version on the Mac, which is what I'm using now, and it seems to work pretty well. Um, I did actually already record the first few levels for this Let's Play, but I was using my Mac keyboard, which is really bad for these kind of games because the arrow keys are all squashed together. So I went and got my gaming keyboard uh, from in the other room. Hopefully it's not too loud. I can see the audio spiking a bit when I press the arrow keys, but they can't really be helped. Um, but yeah, I'm just really looking forward to playing through this game. Hope you guys are all enjoying watching so far. It's been a long time since I did a Let's Play. For those of you that don't know, about four years ago, my main YouTube channel was actually called Let's Play Retro Games and then I decided to change the name because I actually stopped doing Let's Plays and then people were coming to the coming to the channel expecting to see Let's Plays when there weren't any so I did feel kind of bad about that and I had to change all my branding and stuff to Retro Break which you know and hopefully love today I think it was a good idea anyway so I'm actually going to try and do more Let's Plays on this Retro Break gameplay channel now because I do kind of miss making them even though I like, obviously, obviously I enjoy making the bigger videos for my main channel, but it's kind of relaxing just sitting down and talking while I'm playing through a game and not really having to worry about putting a script together or anything, which I'm trying to do a lot more of, and hopefully in 2020, in terms of writing at least, the videos will be a bit higher quality. I'm always looking to try and make my videos better and better as time goes on, and People seem to have noticed that, so hopefully I can keep that up next year. I've got a lot of exciting videos planned. Maybe if you stick around watching this for long enough, you might hear about some. And, oh my god, I can't even get past level one. He wasn't joking when he said this game was frustrating. Maybe I should give up on trying to get all of these snowflakes. I'll try one more time to get all of them, and then maybe I'll do what I used to do with Let's Plays and just fast forward a bit, so you don't have to see me suffer. I'm also playing it in quite a small screen because, like I said, I'm using my Mac and basically it's quite old at this point and it could barely even handle running this Flash game in full screen with OBS capturing it at the same time, which is quite sad. I am... I'm either hoping to get a new iMac because I do really like using Final Cut or I'm going to give up getting that one. Uh, or when we get a new house and I've got enough room to play VR in the game room then I'll bring the gaming PC in this in the game room instead rather than having two separate computers. So oh, I'm a bit sad I missed that one snowflake then. There's the last three. And instead of a flagpole at the end you get a treasure chest. That one's already opened up because I already actually played this before. Let's go to level two. Here we go. Hopefully the sound's a little bit better now. It was a little bit loud beforehand, so I've turned it down very slightly. So, fingers crossed it's all good. Uh, fingers crossed it actually lets me load up level 2 as well. Okay. I think we're sorted. Let's do level 2. Sorry about that. I'm having to play in a really small window now to keep the frame rate going. I also love the fact that in the documentary, the developers for the game actually have one of the levels printed out on the wall. That just goes to show that it must mean so much to them, even after all of the other things that they've worked on throughout their careers. I just thought that was really cool. One thing that I don't think very is very cool about this is the fact that when you get hit by an enemy, it slows you down to a crawl and you can't even carry on moving to the right very far. That's making this a lot more difficult than it should be. At least it doesn't have knockback like the old Mega Man games. Could be worse, I suppose. Oh, 
Oh yeah, earlier as well, when I downloaded the Flashpoint software, I downloaded a load of Flash games that I used to play at school that I'd like completely forgotten about until just now, so I'm really excited to go back and try them for literally the first time in probably 20 or so years for some of them. I'm really looking forward to, to giving them all a go later. I might have to do it on my Windows computer though because for some reason the Mac version of the Flash player thing doesn't have previews for the game so you can't really see what you're choosing if you don't already know the title. Which is a bit annoying because on the other side it had thumbnails for the game so I could actually see what they were. Man, this game's really hard. And it starts you right back from the beginning. I guess if you're playing it at the time, you'd do it one level a day so you could spend some time getting used to the level layouts and stuff. So I guess it's only frustrating for me because I'm trying to play through all of them in one go. I'm doing a bit better. And as far as I know, there's hidden heart containers in some of the levels as well. Which um, give you one extra heart, which will be useful. I guess it also doesn't help that I'm not really used to playing platformers with just arrow keys. My right hand doesn't know what to do with itself. Ah! Damn it. Right, I'm taking the bottom route. If I've learnt anything from Sonic, the bottom route's the easiest to get to and the fastest, but you'll miss out on all the secrets. At least that's how I think Sonic works. Or maybe the bottom route is the one with the most enemies and the top route is the fastest. I don't know. I always ended up on the bottom route anyway when I was playing Sonic. Especially Sonic 1. That game gets really hard later on. Uh, and if anyone's wondering, because I know a few people have been asking, I do plan on streaming games at some point in the future, but my setup at the minute, I'm sure you can tell from how much I've been complaining about it already, it really isn't ideal for streaming games. So I've been putting it off until I get a better setup and I can go back to trying to stream again sometime. There we go, level 2 done. And then, I'm not sure if you saw this on the first one, but it basically t talks a little bit about the game that it's demoing and then you can go to the lab to find out some more about the games. Apparently my name is Chubby Snow, even though I called Upico up there. And then you can get download rewards, MP3s, um, screen savers. I'm not sure if they're in this version though, let's see. Open with archive utility, sure. Oh, what did I get? Let's see, Metroid Prime Hunters. Oh, that's cool, they are included. So if I bring that into the view there, there you go. So you've got a Metroid, got two different Metroid Prime Hunters wallpapers. How cool was that? And I wonder if the other one gave me some Yoshi's Island ones? Yeah, they, op they open up too big for this. I've really had to zoom the screen in. As you can tell. Yeah, I get some Yoshi's Island wallpapers as well, that's cool. I do find it funny that the highest resolution at the time was 1028 by uh, 1024. That's only 4 by 3, isn't it? I'm saying that on my 5K screen, so if you're wondering why I'm squinting like that, it's because a lot of these, a lot of this writing is really small. There's also videos that show you a trailer of the game, that's cool. Screenshots. If you want to see some screenshots from the game. Info. They really did put a lot of effort into this. And you can do the same with Metroid Prime. Now how do I get back to the main map? There we go. Right, on to level 3. I'm loving this music by the way. I genuinely think this has a really cool soundtrack. Oh, I need to actually click on it before I can... Hey, Mario 3 style. I wonder which Mario games they played to get inspiration from uh, for this. I'd say probably Mario 3 or maybe Mario World. Although it doesn't have a dedicated run button like the Mario games. Which is a bit of a shame. I think if it had a dedicated run button rather than just being based on momentum, 
that would make it even more fun to play. Not that I'm saying it's bad, I mean, for a Flash game as well, it's pretty incredible. I don't actually know whether these snowflakes give you anything extra. Like, even the even the physics on that, where the enemies were standing on the edge of that and it was making it tilt backwards, that's so cool. You would never see anything like that usually in Flash games. I mean, like I said, I downloaded that Flash archive. I've been playing through some of the games earlier and they're so much more basic than this one. I'm really surprised that it wasn't more popular than it was. I guess people only found out, like, a few years ago that you can actually still play this, but... When they did find out, I'm actually surprised that it didn't really take off. It, it took until next video to really, you know, gain a bit of traction. So it's quite surprising. I won't go into the laboratory for every single one of these. I'll just keep playing through the levels and maybe if I find a really interesting game then I'll go and check them out and download the wallpapers. That actually reminds me of the uh, Club Nintendo store back in the day, back in the early 2000s, maybe 2002, three. You could use the, they were called VIP points at the time, on the UK store, not like Club Nintendo points which came after. You could actually use the VIP points to buy certain prizes that you'd get on the website, but they were literally just JPEGs, JPEG backgrounds. I remember spending 600 points, which was about uh, three games worth of points maybe? on some stupid NBA Jam wallpaper because I was just so excited about the idea of downloading wallpapers for free. Even though it wasn't really free, it probably cost me like 80 quid to get that stupid wallpaper. And then I had to look around the rest of the website and find out about all this other even cooler stuff that you could get. Including some Flash games actually, there was like this kind of Nintendo house that you could download or something. I'll see if I can find it in the Flash archives later, that'd be something really interesting to look back on. I don't know whether the US got the same thing, but I remember the Nintendo VIP store in the UK. It was really popular back in the day and then they changed it for Club Nintendo, which was good in a way because they changed a lot of the rewards to be more physical rewards and then, as you know, Club Nintendo has now gone the way of Nintendo VIP and it's been replaced with the my gold points system or whatever, which is nowhere near as good. I know some people like it because it gives you discounts on games, but I don't really care for discounts on games that I was planning on buying anyway. I'd rather have something like a t-shirt or a calendar or something physical. It just feels more exciting, especially considering the fact that you could only get the stuff through the Club Nintendo store. So it's like, I know you could go on eBay and get it, but it's not really the same. It felt more special. Um, that's something I've actually been planning on doing a video about for a while, is all of the Club Nintendo stuff that I've got, because I've got quite a lot. Ah, I'm really sucking at this stage. Yeah, I've really, I've actually got a lot of Club Nintendo things because I actually did my work experience in Game Station, and sometimes when the, when the trade-ins came in, they didn't need to include the Club Nintendo cards as part of the games that were traded in, so I was a little bit cheeky. And sometimes, if it was a game I didn't already have, I would actually take the card and use the points to get the Club Nintendo points. So, if you actually have a look at my history on the Nintendo website, it shows that I had, like, hundreds of DS games. So, I guess that was a bit cheeky, but no one really cared, so I wasn't too bothered. <laughs> but yeah, that's just a funny little story of something that happened in the past. And I really need to pay attention, because I'm not getting anywhere in the stage. And maybe I'll stop after this level and actually look up to see if collecting all of the snowflakes actually gets you anything. I say look up, but I don't actually know if there's any information about this game online to actually find out to see if there is or not. So I would say if anyone's watching, let me know, but as I'm not doing this live, it won't really help because I'm planning to play through the whole game. Oh, if I even remember that these stupid enemies keep coming out of the floor. This is like Mega Man levels of trolling. I mean, a lot of Flash games back in the day were made based on trolling, so in that sense this one's a very uh, forgiving game compared to a lot of other games that were out there at the time. Like, do you want to be the, be the guy, is it? Want to be the guy? I want to be the guy? Something like that. Or all those fake Mario games where just thwomps appear out of nowhere every few seconds. Ah, oh, come on, I was on the platform then. 
I also like the fact that it says underneath the game, if you want the best performance, check out Internet Explorer. I don't think anyone's ever said if you want the best performance, go to Internet Explorer before or since this game. Although at the time, I don't really know what alternatives there were. I think I was using Internet Explorer back in 2006. Maybe... I don't, I don't even think Firefox was around that long ago. I don't know. I remember I swapped to Firefox at some point, maybe around 2006-ish. And then when Google Chrome came out, I was in first year of college and I... Oh my god, I really suck. Yeah, so I swapped to Google Chrome when that first came out in 2008, maybe? I thought that was really good, although a lot of my friends at college stuck with Firefox a lot longer. For some reason they didn't trust Chrome or they didn't, they didn't think it was as fast as Firefox. And these days I use, if I'm on the Mac, which I'm using now, I use Safari. Because I just think it's perfectly fine for what I want to use it for. And it's got a really nice um, front screen when you turn it on now, since the latest update on Big Sur. And on my Windows PC in the other room I use, I use Chrome. It tried to get me to use Edge, but I'm like, uh, I've already got all my favourites on Chrome, so... I'll stick to using that, oh my god. Man. I bet you guys are getting really frustrated watching me play this. I forgot how difficult it is to talk and play at the same time. And I really wish there was a way of remapping these controls because it's starting to hurt my fingers using the arrow keys like this. The only game I think on the PC where I've exclusively used arrow keys is the old Trackmania games. But that was fine because you could just hold the up button whereas here you actually have to physically keep letting go and pressing the up button. It's really starting to ache my hands. Oh, oh well, I'll stop complaining. Ah! Ooh! Ah! <laughs> no! That was close. I haven't found any of these extra heart containers yet. I wonder if there's any... I wonder how many there are overall. Oh my god. Kids who played this back in the day must have had a lot of patience trying to get through all these stages. That's something actually. Let me know in the comments if you ever did play this back in the day. That would be really interesting to know. Ah, I'm too scared. Oh, they come back. That's cool. How am I supposed to get that? Do I have to get... <gasps> oh, that was close. I didn't realise you don't get enough height there. I suppose you have to... How are you supposed to get... Oh my god, there's loads of extra stuff up there. This is like a proper Sonic level, the amount of different possibilities to go through this stage. All the different things. If you imagine them as rings instead, then it pretty much is a Sonic level. Do I risk going that way? I don't know why, but I keep expecting them big ones to split in half. Where am I going? Oh god, that was close. Yeah, I don't know why, but I keep expecting those bigger enemies to split in half when I jump on him. Like... Do giant Goombas do that? Is there a Mario game with giant Goombas that split in half? There's some game anyway where the enemies sort of pop out of the main enemy after you've jumped on them. Can't really remember what I'm thinking. I don't think I'm thinking of a Mario game. Let me know in the comments what games have enemies that split in half when you jump on them. I was contemplating putting this on my main channel, but I want to keep my main channel to be focused videos every week instead. Oh wow, how did I manage to get up there? And I managed to get up there when I didn't even need the heart, unlike all the other times. Anything in here? Just a poor penguin minding his own business. Right, where do I need to go now? Up there? I don't think I can now. Ah, uh, the limited view is kind of difficult. They, they have so much space on the screen, but most of it's used up for explaining the controls, which really don't need explaining, and then a big Nintendo advert on the side, which I guess is kind of necessary, but they could have they could have made the game a little bit bigger. Right, on to stage five. This one's got very precarious looking platforms. I still haven't figured out why you need to collect all these snowflakes. If I find a really easy stage, I'm going to try and get them all just to see just to see what happens, but for now, let's carry on. I'm not too worried about getting them. I bet for the completionists out there, 
you hate to see this, but what can you do? I haven't got all day to play this. I've got actual videos to work on. Ah! Not off to a good start. Man, I really wish there was a way to remap, remap the controls. I shouldn't be complaining though, it's just so cool that this game even exists. Ah, go away fish. I am genuinely blown away by the quality of this for a 2006 Flash game. Ah, no. I think actually around 2006 I tried making my own Flash game. It was, it was pretty bad. I also used to make some Flash animations, they were mostly like Kirby eating random uh, sprites that are found on Sprites Resource or uh, what's that website called? I can't remember what it's called now, like Mushroom Kingdom, something Kingdom, I think. Spriters Kingdom? I don't know, there was a few different sites and I used to love going there and just downloading all the sprites and then making stupid flash animations of Kirby eating everyone. I don't even know if I ever uploaded them anywhere. It was back in school, so like 2000 and... Yeah, probably. Maybe a bit earlier than 2006, maybe like 2004 or something. My first experience with Flash was actually in 2004. I remember we got a demo of Flash MX before it was Adobe, back when it was Macromedia. And I used to play around with that a lot. There was a demo where you had to guide a turtle or... It was like an interactive demo when you could change a sprite and that was sort of my first real experience with programming. And I found it really interesting but I never really pursued it much more than that until college many years later. And then I did actually take a course in college on ActionScript, which if any of you guys watching know, ActionScript is now a dead coding language as far as I'm aware. So. That course didn't exactly do me very good. Let's move on to level 6. And yeah, I, I do have some of the games that I worked on back at college on my hard drive somewhere, so maybe I'll upload some of them gameplay clips to this second channel, which seems to be where things go to die because nothing on this channel's got any views. Apart from some random Stadia tests that I did, I guess people were interested at the time to see how Stadia ran. And I was planning to do... I like the way these snowballs roll down the hill, by the way. That's that's another really nice use of physics there. Kind of reminds me of the game I made called Super Donuts, which is unfortunately no longer available because it was costing me too much money to host it. But Maybe one day I'll bring that back from the dead as well. It's kind of like this, actually, just without a jump button because you play as a donut that just rolls around everywhere. But even so... I would really like to work on a game again at some point in the near future. I just, for some reason, because I used Stencil to make my last game, I don't really feel like using that again because I want to learn how to program better. So I've downloaded Unity, but there's just so much to it and when I was using Stencil to make Super Donuts I had a really good idea of what I wanted the game to be, but since then I haven't really had a great idea that I really want to work on, which is kind of a shame. I feel like that's just because there's so much going on in life at the minute, but a few years ago I could just come up with game ideas out of nowhere, and these days I seem to be struggling to come up with ideas more. I think maybe it's to do with the fact that I'm not so confident with actually programming, so I don't really understand how much I can actually think about doing, if that makes sense. So it's not like I haven't got ideas, it's like I've got ideas but I don't know if they would be impossible for me to actually implement or... The other thing I'm worried about is I do get quite frustrated if I can't do things after a while so I don't want to come up with loads of ideas and then get frustrated at the fact that my skills aren't at the level I'd like them to be, if that makes sense. So I want to start off... Oh, you can't jump on them. So I want to start off with something that's quite simple, like an arcade style game before I go back into making a bigger game like a platformer or adventure game. I've got some ideas of like RPGs that I'd like to make and stuff as well, but the other thing is it takes so much time to make a game compared to making videos and considering YouTube's kind of taken off for me now, it feels like 
I keep saying to myself, should I really be dedicating time to making games when people don't really play the games that I make, but people do watch the videos? It just feels like I should be putting all my effort into videos at the minute while that's growing nicely. And then maybe in the future, when I don't need to worry so much about being um, like on a regular upload schedule, then maybe I could sort of transition to doing a video every two weeks and then use every other week to work on games but trying to do all of that and juggle a full-time job at the same time it really does just drain me. I did try doing it a few years ago making games and videos at the same time and also trying to you know progress at work and I just completely burnt out I had a bit of a, a breakdown and I actually ended up going to the doctors because uh, anxiety attacks and stuff which really wasn't very nice at all so I do not want to get in that situation again therefore I'm only focusing on videos so if you've been wondering why I've not been making many games recently that's why not that many people have been wondering probably but it just feels good to get this sort of stuff off my chest and that's one thing that I used to really love about doing let's plays it's just letting you guys know letting you guys know what's on my mind whether you care or not I guess it's just kind of a a way of me letting off some steam, talking out there in the open. It's quite refreshing actually. But yeah, let me know if you're enjoying this, maybe I'll do some more Let's Plays in the future. But like I said about splitting my time, I don't want to do too much on this second channel. And if you are watching and you haven't checked out my main channel, just called Retro Break, please go and have a look because I do put a lot of effort into it. Probably way too much effort than I actually should considering the size and the fact that it doesn't really get that many views well the views seem a bit all over the place recently some videos seem to get thousands and then some videos which I think are even better like I put a lot of time and effort into they barely break like three four hundred at max and it just doesn't make any sense I think I'm slowly getting to understand what people want from the channel which is something that I really struggled with for a long time so I've what I've done at the end of this year I'm actually recording this right at the end of 2020 and what I've done is go back over the past year note down all the videos that I've done that got over a thousand views and then they're the kind of video that I'm going to focus on next year and the videos that got less than a thousand I'm going to try if I can if I can resist it, I'm going to try not to do any videos in that style. I just think like, if I want to actually grow, I can't just do the videos that I want to make. I need to do the videos that will actually get an audience, which is kind of sad, but I guess that's how a lot of artists feel when they're trying to grow. And then my plan is, once I get enough regular viewers to, to the channel, enough regular subscribers that watch every video, then I don't need to worry so much about doing things just to please a potential audience, if that makes any sense. Hopefully I'm not just talking nonsense, but that's my plan. Because I read somewhere that if you want to really make YouTube into a full-time thing, which I'm still trying to decide if that's something I really want to do or not, but I, I know that I really, really enjoy planning and coming up with videos, and if I could ever do that full-time, I would absolutely love to. I think at the minute it's just a case of me growing my skills, which I'm trying to do as much as possible. That's one of the reasons that I started going weekly with my videos a few years ago, is because I knew if I stick to doing weekly videos, I will eventually build up the skills that I feel good enough about releasing videos that will get a wider audience watching. So I'm kind of glad that it's been a slow build up of viewers and subscribers rather than one big jump because I'm not really sure how I'd handle that. I wouldn't really feel like I'd earned it, if that makes sense. And I'm sure that happens to some YouTubers who've got shoutouts from bigger channels and then their subs have exploded. Then they don't really know how to take the channel forward, but because I've been growing at such a steady rate for such a long amount of time, I feel like I'm in a really good position to keep growing at my own pace. I think that's really helpful because it'll help me understand what I actually want to do in the future. I don't know why I'm getting really deep with you guys here. I'm playing a game about snowmen being attacked by floating fairy fireballs. But yeah, if anyone was interested in learning a little bit, a little bit more about me, 
I guess that's what this second channel can be for as well, is just me sharing my thoughts about my main channel, or about about life in general maybe? Who knows? I still haven't figured it out. I don't want to spend too much time dedicated to other channels though. I do have another one called Random Break, where I was planning on doing videos that aren't gaming related. Because I do, surprisingly, I do enjoy things that aren't just games. And it would be really good if I had some sort of creative outlet to talk about them as well. Like there's maybe books I've been reading that I want to discuss, or just things that's been going on in the real world, like maybe events that I'm going to that aren't gaming related that I want to take videos at, or um, interviews with other creators maybe. I really haven't decided at all what I want to put on there. I think I've got three videos up on that channel at the minute. There was one for the Day in a Life a YouTube film that was being done this year. It was like a 10th anniversary thing from the original, so... Ah, oh, man. That was something I did this year. I didn't manage to do it the first time around. Even though I knew about it, I really wish I had. I was at uni back then and I think even if the video hadn't been selected for the film, I think it would be just nice to look back and see what life was like for me back then. And that's something else that I really like about doing YouTube in general, is actually having kind of a diary of myself to look back on. I know that might sound a bit weird, but maybe many years in the future it would be interesting to look back and see what I was doing all those years ago. So, I've just been talking for so long now, I had no idea of what I was even doing then. Right, this level is sponsored by Animal Crossing Wild World, one of the best games in the Animal Crossing series, in my opinion. My favourite will always be the GameCube one though, because that's the one I grew up with. And I, at the time, absolutely obsessed with it. And then I think each subsequent Animal Crossing after that, I've got less and less interested as time goes on. I did quite enjoy the 3DS one because when that came out I was at uni and all my uh, friends at uni who were mostly doing game design courses like I was, they were all playing Animal Crossing as well so it was a really big community thing back then. The Switch one I haven't been that keen on, I feel like it was missing a lot from the early Animal Crossing games and I, and I don't really know why more people aren't shouting up about the fact that it's missing so much content. In some ways it's adding content, like. That was a quick level. It's been adding content like the customization options and stuff, but there's so much that's missing, like different villages, different different things you could do in the game. I don't know, I'm not really a huge fan of the new one on the Switch. But to be honest, I hate to say this, but recently I'm not really a huge fan of Nintendo in general. Not really since I guess since the 3DS was about in its second year maybe. I feel like Nintendo was just I guess they've always been doing this, thinking back, but they've just, they were just rehashing so many games with like minimal updates and trying to call them new releases. I feel like they're doing the same with the Switch now. Especially this year, there's been, what, two first party Nintendo games? There's been Animal Crossing and there's been Paper Mario. And that's it, really, unless you count ports. Or I guess you can count Ring Fit Adventure. But I think Nintendo has been mostly focused this year on the Universal Studios uh, Nintendo Land thing. Which does look amazing by the way, and next time I go back to Japan, I'm definitely going to Universal Studios again. I went there in 2016 to Universal Studios in Osaka and it is amazing, so to go and see the Nintendo world would be a dream come true. A childhood dream come true, I'm sure I wouldn't be quite as excited these days as I would have been back then. But even so, still looks really cool. And I want to go on all the rides. There's a Mario Kart ride, I think there's a, a Donkey Kong minecart roller coaster. Just looks so cool. And there's like AR things with the Mario Kart rides. So you wear these glasses as you go in. And that's something I really loved about Universal Studios was all the 3D rides where you have to wear the 3D glasses. But the 3D was like really good, like better than cinema quality in some cases. I don't know whether it was like special IMAX 3D glasses or something, but they really worked so much better than the standard 3D you get in the cinema. Or the 3D that you could get on TVs at the time. I was blown away, I remember being on the... There was two, I think, that really blew me away. There was a Spider-Man level. Not level, what am I on about? There was a Spider-Man ride, like a roller coaster. 
which was re oh, I found one of them heart containers. I bet I've missed loads of them. This is the first one I've seen so far. Get out of the way! Yeah, what was I saying? There was a... Oh, never mind. There was a Spider-Man roller coaster, and you wore the 3D glasses, and as the roller coaster was... Who's supposed to get in there? As the roller coaster was moving, um, you could actually see the city like flying towards you in 3D, and it would be like you jumped off the top of the building, and it was really impressive. I'd never really seen anything like it before. I'm sure if any of you watching have been to Universal Studios ever, you'll know what I mean. And let me know if you have. Let me know if you were as, ma as amazed as I was. I was completely, like, shocked. And the same with the Harry Potter ride that flew around Hogwarts. I thought that was so cool as well. And even the queue going through Hogwarts Castle and getting to look around... Um, it's been so long since I've read Harry Potter, I can't remember what it's called. That village where you can go in all the shops and stuff. I can't remember. The place that Harry shouts and the fireplace that he wants to to go to. Why well, can't I remember what it's called? Oh, if my sister was here, she'd tell me. She's a huge Harry Potter fan. Ow, ow, ah! Ooh, that was lucky. Right, where am I supposed to go now? Through the tree. That was a really fun level. I like that one. Where are we now? Are we halfway through? Let's see. Yep, 12 out of 24. Here we go, mission 13, sponsored by a pink DS Lite. And we've got another new background. And a very, uh, almost new Super Mario Bros. style level. As in, extremely basic. Ow. And the penguins have learned how to fly. That's another new thing for this one. Ah, oh, I wish I hadn't learned to fly. For some reason this level does seem a lot more basic. Maybe it's just because it's introducing the flying penguins. Ah, I really don't like them flying. I need a heart. Ah, that was close. He's the one that got me last time. There's a heart. And this one also introduces these weird blue, uh, I guess you'd call them spike balls. I really need to find a heart container in one of these levels. I swear I've missed loads of them already. And the famous moving clouds. Oh, I didn't realise the ones that you stand on actually move up and down as well, that's pretty cool. It can actually tell, like, to weigh the platform down when you stand on it. Only slightly, though. But yeah, the amount of... Hey, I actually got them all. Let's see if anything happens. Is anything going to happen? Way to go, Chubby. With your help, we found the files of the Nintendo DS Lite Pink Edition TM. You can check them out in the lab. But did anything happen for me getting all of these snowflakes? Who knows? So far you've got 13 out of 24 game files. Thanks for helping Chubby. Download your rewards here first. Please select your screen resolution. I think this is just going to be for the DS Lite yet. I don't want pink DS Lite screen wallpapers. Okay, I know what the DS Lite is. What are these for? Some blank squares on the wall for no apparent reason. Screenshots? Not really screenshots. So I don't think this has anything to do with um, with collecting those things. I wonder what the trailer for Twilight Princess is. Or does it, oh, that's what the other thing was for. It was trailers, wasn't it? Hey, it's the original promo art back when the Twilight Realm was in black and white. And the old style fight on the bridge as well, and the changed lighting in that room. Let's see. Oh, wow, it's the original, original trailer, the 2004 one. A really cool trailer, but almost none of this made it into the final game, which I was really disappointed with back in the day because I thought this was just absolutely mind blowing, like the best thing I'd ever seen. Actually, this is 
not the original 2004 trailer, because this one's using different music. Or at least a very heavily compressed version of the song that was used in that one. I think it is a different song altogether compared to the one that they showed at E3. This is more like the music they used in the second trailer. Still cool to see though, but I am so sad that almost none of this actually became part of what Twilight Princess ended up being. I would love to find a playable version of that early demo of the game. I'm guessing they had to change the music to make it fit in that file size or something. Okay, all you get for getting all of the snowflakes is a different colour on the uh, on the door. I suppose you can call it a door. The advent pickup thing. So, nothing too exciting. Maybe you unlock something if you collect all of them, I'll say. Well, we won't see, but maybe someone else has done that. For now, I'm just... I'm just happy playing through. I'm not happy with these flying penguins, though. Yeah, your heart. I was actually thinking I might be able to skip to Oh, they're clever as well. They stay on the platform. Go away. I wonder if I can cheat. I bet you can cheat and jump up there. Come on. Yeah, yeah you can. Oh, no! I was going to try and go back and pick that heart up. Never mind. Oh, my God. Will I not learn? Oh man, the hitboxes are really big in this. I feel like it's not fair. Or I'm just not paying enough attention. It is, what, one o'clock here in the UK right now? But it's... I'm on a break from work, so I don't need to go to bed early. It's that weird time between Christmas and New Year when no one really knows what's going on. Especially this year when we've not been able to go anywhere. What a strange year it's been. I don't know about other countries, anyone that's watching, but in the UK, we're pretty much on complete lockdown again now. Until who knows when. Until the vaccine gets rolled out and then there's going to be people that refuse to have it for whatever reasons I've got. I'm not going to judge anyone, but I just want all this over with. And I'm sure everyone else does as well. Like, this is going to age this video because I'm always worried about talking about COVID because it's going to really age things. Like, I like my stuff to kind of be timeless, and when you're saying things about current events, it kind of ruins that aspect of the videos. But never mind, I guess you have to be kind of topical. Oh man, I'm not doing well on this level. Hey, one-handed gameplay. I can have a drink and play at the same time. I wonder if I can get enough speed to jump on that purple one there and skip the skip that slope. Let's see if I can build enough speed up. Yeah, that's better. And then you have to be careful standing on that one little bit there. Also, I'm really sorry if this keyboard's too loud, but it's the only way I could physically play this game without getting horrible hand cramps. Ah, oh, no, that's not fair. Right, where am I? I don't like this. No, I'm not risking them. Am I even going the right way? Ooh, that was close. Come on, flying penguins. I think they're penguins. There's another one. I have to bounce off that one. Oh no, I can just go over there. Wow, they even have slippery... Actually, the, like the slope on that was an actual slope. Wow, I missed loads in that stage. Only 8 out of 24. Right, level 15. We're almost there now. Nine more stages. We can do it. Oh no, we can't do it. I feel like the difficulty is going up again now. Ooh, a new enemy. What 
is it? Ow. Ah, oh, that's not fair. I couldn't see it. Oh yeah, good news. If anyone's enjoying this Let's Play, the game is actually coming out next year, officially, on Steam, in 60 FPS, which will be really cool. Of course, minus all of the Nintendo adverts, because uh, I think in the video what he said was the game itself is owned by the company, uh, what are they called, Extra Toxic. And they basically bought, Nintendo basically bought the game from them to use as a kind of advertising platform for the Wii and the, and the DS. Which is a really cool idea. I wonder if there's other games like this that have been used as advertising space. I mean, I guess you could say that about any iOS or Android game in the past 10 years or so, but I mean actually used by a, a company specifically, not just AdSense or Google Ads or whatever they're called. That'd be really interesting, so let me know if you know any other games that have been used in this way, in this really like specific marketing. Ooh, that's cool. I like the fact you can duck under there. Damn. I'm missing the Wally Mammoth now. Can I catch up with him? Oh, yes, I can. That was close. Quite like that stage. That that stage was sponsored by Wii Sports. Number 16. Let's go. I'm not sure what the point of those enemies are. They're like like wigglers. I guess you um, use them to bounce off more than anything. Right, to get up there. Yeah, that worked. I am still blown away that this is only a flash game. This has to be one of the most polished flash games I've ever played. I wonder if they used this engine for any other platformers. I know they have that weird game where you have to draw on the eggs, but it's completely different. Yeah, it was a pretty short stage. So yeah, I wonder if they've, they've actually made any other platformers. I presume they must have made at least some test ones before this that maybe never got released to the public. But it would be interesting to know for sure. Oh, I wasn't looking then. Oh, that's my excuse. Frame rate's chugging on this stage for some reason. Oh, that doesn't go as far as I keep thinking it will. Too many clouds. Ugh. This reminds me of um, a Flash game I used to play. It was like Speedy Gonzales or something, but it had a level editor. And you could you could put in like moving clouds like this to jump on. I can't remember what the what the game was actually called. I'm sure it was Speedy Gondalis or something similar. It was on like one of those e-games collection CDs. I'm sure if you had a PC in the late 90s you'll know what I mean. The same kind of thing that games like Speedy Egbert came on and those weird 3D level maker things. Yeah, hey, not bad. Still haven't found any heart containers though and I'm getting a bit worried now. I did watch Nick's playthrough of the fun game, and I know the final boss is quite difficult, so I'm a bit worried about that. Especially if I haven't picked up any extra lives. But we'll see how far I manage to get. Oh, that's not fair. Ah, oh, I didn't think it would hurt if you went into that, I only thought it would hurt if you went into the tusks. But apparently, any part of a woolly mammoth hurts a snowman. And I'm getting careless now. Oh man, what am I supposed to do there? There's nothing to jump up on. Do I have to wait for one of the birds, maybe? I'm gonna play it safe this time. 
or a bit safer, at least. Maybe. I usually like to try and speedrun these kind of games, if I can. I get really impatient in platformers if I have to stop. That's why I hate Sonic 1 so much, because of all the stop-start gameplay. Like, ugh, Labyrinth Zone, ugh, Marvel Zone, no. Get them away from me. That's why I like Sonic 2, because it's just so, like, everything's so instant, and there's not really that many parts of the game that slow you down, or force you to slow down. Apart from, obviously, like, yeah, I found one. My first extra heart. I wonder how many I've missed. Probably a lot. There we go. Yeah, like I was saying, the only bit that really annoys me about Sonic 2 was that fight with Metal Sonic near the end, where if you die, then you start again without any rings. I'm always good in the game up till that point, and then you have to be so precise on that boss fight. It really annoys me. Those scorpions are going to annoy me as well. I can feel it. I wonder if anyone's done a 100% uh, run of this. I presume they have. If it's anything like that McDonald's game that he talked about last time, it's going to have thousands of videos about it soon. I feel like I'm jumping on the bandwagon a little bit, but I am genuinely really interested in playing this. And I'm genuinely interested in Flash game preservation in general, so... Maybe I'll do a video on it. I pretty much guarantee it won't get any views though, so... Like I said, I'm trying to juggle doing videos for myself and videos that I know people will actually watch. I guess that's part of being a YouTuber, is kind of the juggling act of doing what you want to do mixed with what other people want you to do. I guess also mixed with what you think people want and then you get it horribly wrong and the video just dies a slow death anyway. Oh, spikes everywhere this one. I feel like they could have designed this game better to give you more of a reason to actually go out of your way to collect the snowdrop things. Hopefully in the remake they give them more of a purpose. Because for me it just feels like they're up there, but I'm not really that bothered about going up there, because I know they don't do anything. Oh. Oh, it did hurt me. I was wondering why I didn't get hurt then. Do you see what I mean? Like, I can see that they put them there to make the levels a bit more interesting, but if there's no reason to actually collect them, then the levels aren't really that interesting. Like, there's some there in that spider's web, but there's no reason for me to go to it. Maybe I'm just being too picky. It is only a little flash game that was never supposed to be played this many years in the future since they made it anyway, so I shouldn't complain. I bet they never even expected anyone to be playing this in 2020 when they, when they made it. I think it says on the title screen it's available until January 2007, was it? So even the thought of anyone playing the game this many years in the future, they probably didn't even expect that at all. Which is really cool, I think, that such a game can be remembered this many years later. I guess that's why I do my channel in the first place, is to remember games that otherwise would have been forgotten many years ago. Because even though games are old, it still doesn't stop them being any more fun than they were back when they were new. That's why I love retro gaming so much, just because there's so much out there and there's so many unique games that people put so much time and effort into making that have just got forgotten. Or that will be forgotten if it's not for people like us on YouTube and Twitch and whatever. I think it's really important to play these games and sort of keep them alive in people's minds. And preserve our thoughts for the future as well. I think that's something really important. I know I'm being all deep again, and I'm just playing as a snowman. In a cave full of lava, no less. How is he not melting? Clearly, 
I shouldn't have praised the physics earlier because these are ridiculous. <laughs> he doesn't even melt when he dies from being hit by fire. He just falls into a pit. And this lava pit world is sponsored by none other than Nintendogs Dalmatian Edition. I always find it really weird that there was a sequel to Nintendogs on the 3DS and absolutely no one cared. I think that's one of the weirdest things ever because Nintendo just didn't know what to do with the 3DS when they released that system. They're like, it clearly wasn't made for the same audience as the original DS. Like, the kind of people that Nintendo were going for with the original DS, after the first few years at least, we're talking like grandmas and stuff, and I really don't think that the fact that they could now play in stereoscopic 3D and have high definition for the time 3D graphics and all these extra buttons and stuff, I think, man, they messed up. They messed up really bad with the 3DS and the Wii U, in my opinion. Nintendo basically lost that entire market almost overnight when they brought those new systems out. And I think they're still feeling some of that today. I don't even think the Switch is as user-friendly as the DS or the Wii was. It was, a really, it was a really important time for Nintendo, and I feel like they found their audience, and then they just let it go right in front of them because of their weird business decisions, but that's for another time. I might turn that into a full video at some point in the future, but I don't think Nintendo has ever fully recovered from the DS and the Wii era. I think they were shocked by their success, and they didn't know how to go forward. I wonder if anyone else thinks that as well. That's why I'll always say the the DS and the Wii combined was probably my favourite Nintendo era, if you can call it that. I might do a video about my thoughts on Nintendo, but I don't want to upset any of the new fans either, because I know they won't share the same opinions as me. And I suppose a lot of the older fans say that Nintendo died with, like, the N64 or something. Because with the GameCube, it was basically just another, what was it, 8th gen, 7th gen system. They were trying to compete with the PS2 and the Xbox, whereas I feel like with the N64, it was unique enough to be its own thing. And the same with the SNES. I mean, they were kind of competing with the Mega Drive, but it was unique enough to be its own thing. Whereas I think with the GameCube, they relied too heavily on just being able to get ports of everything. And then with the Wii, with the Wii they completely turned that around and there was hardly any ports. Obviously because the Wii wasn't really able to play any of the other games from that generation. At least not with a lot of work from the developers to try and downscale their games. Which is, ironically, something that Nintendo did themselves with the 3DS and the Wii U. Trying to downscale their Wii U games to fit on the 3DS. Towards the end of the 3DS's life as well, which I just thought was a really strange, strange decision for them. And then they even started remaking DS games, which you could actually play on the system itself anyway, so... That never made any sense to me. But yeah, like I said, Nintendo didn't make a lot of sense to me during the 3DS and the Wii U days. And the more I talk about it now, the more I want to do a video on that topic. I think it would be quite interesting. Oh man, I'm really struggling on this level. I need to slow down and concentrate a bit. I realise I haven't really been saying much about the game. I've just been saying whatever's on my mind, which I guess is good, but at the same time, if anyone came here for commentary about the game itself, I do apologise. Hopefully you're still enjoying it. If anyone's still watching, let me know, because, I don't know, this part of the recording's 23 minutes long. I presume the whole thing's been about an hour so far, so if anyone is still watching after an hour, that's absolutely amazing. Please let me know in the comments if anyone's still watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Although I never... When I was doing Let's Plays before, 
I never expected anyone to watch all the way through, but surprisingly, quite a lot of people did. But then I decided that I'd rather make um, more... How would you say it? More thought out content? Ah, more planned content, I suppose you could call it. Which I enjoyed doing more than Let's Play, so that's why I focused on that. That's why I've been trying to make like 15 minute videos. Because I don't want to waste people's time as well. I just want, to, want people to think, yeah, I've got 15 minutes spare, I can spare watching a video. Whereas with the Let's Play, it's like, unless you're a kid or someone at college or something, I don't really expect anyone to spend hours watching one video. I know I can't really do that anymore, so I wouldn't really expect anyone else to either. Obviously, when I was back at college in the mid-2000s, I had a lot more time to spend watching Let's Plays and stuff. I used to absolutely love it. And I think that if Twitch was around back then, I would have loved that as well. But these days, I just don't have the time to try and sit there for hours and watch streamers and then feel bad for having to drop off the streams. I don't know. It's not for me. That's why I try to... That's why I tend to stick to YouTube. I feel like the time investment isn't so great on that platform. Oh, man! Why am I struggling so much? Even though I'm struggling, I have to say I do really like the controls. I think they are really... Not really responsive, because it's done quite floaty. They're just really... Well done in the fact that you know if you mess up it's your fault, because you can tell how the character moves, and you know exactly what to expect. And I also like the fact that, like a lot of ah, like a lot of good platformers, you can adjust your momentum in the air, like before you before you land. So if you do mess up, you've got a little bit of time to adjust, which is always good and is much needed in this stage. Because I am that came way too fast. I need to slow down a bit. I think. Right, I've got four hearts. Oh come on, they're too fast. It just pushed me into the lava as well. I think this is the level I've struggled the most on. So far. Need to watch out for those sideways ones. Okay, I'm doing better than I was last time. Trying to stay in the middle of these platforms as well. Yeah. Oh no, I forgot about him. Oh, that was close. And then a little jump. That's something else I like about the controls. Uh, is the fact that you can do small jumps. Because a lot of Flash games, for some reason, they didn't implement that. Like, if you just tap, you do a smaller jump. Which is something I think is really important for platformers. And if they don't have that, it just makes them feel kind of cheap, in a way. So if I ever do get around to making a platformer, one of the things I'm going to absolutely focus on, first and foremost, is the, the feel of it. The controls, the... momentum. Ah! Oh! That's not fair. I was really trying to pay attention then as well. Yeah, like I was saying, one of the most important things for me with platformers is getting the physics down right. And that, that can make and break make or break a game. It doesn't matter how good the Oh my god. It doesn't matter how good the level design is or the the rest of the game's mechanics. If it doesn't feel good to play straight away, then it's just for me at least, it's just an instant turn off. I'm sure a lot of other people share that thought as well. Come on, I really don't care anymore. I'd like to see a speedrun of this level. That'd be really uh, impressive. If anyone's managed to do one. Okay, I'm back and we've got four levels left. And as you can see, I've changed clothes. Got this really cool Game Boy t-shirt that I got for Christmas. Oh, and now I remember why I gave up yesterday. This level was horrible, and it's also way too loud on my headphones. That's better. So, what was I struggling with? For some reason, I've come back to the game today, and the controls feel a lot better. I don't know why. I haven't changed the keyboard or anything. Maybe I just got more used to it. And as soon as I say that, I die. Let's go, speedrun strats. 
Ow. I am tempted once I've finished playing this to um, have a look at some speedrunning, maybe I'm going to speedrunning.com and see if anyone's uploaded a full playthrough. See how badly I'm doing. I don't have the time to try and practice for speedruns. I would love to. I mean, there are a few games that I would really like to try and speedrun. Mostly some of the older Mario games. Mario Land on the Game Boy. I used to be really good at that. I actually managed to tie with the world record back in 2008. I think it was something like 12 minutes. Something like that. I remember I pretty much spent all my free time at college that year just playing through Mario Land over and over again for some unknown reason. I really do love that game. A lot of people say Mario Land 2 is better, but I prefer the original just because of how straightforward it is. It just feels really good to play. I know some people don't like the physics, but I think that's what makes it fun because you can just go so fast and the levels are built in a way that you can just keep running a lot of the time, whereas in Mario Land 2 the levels were a lot bigger with like a lot more different paths and a lot more scrolling and things, whereas the first game was pretty much more like a Sonic game, just like continually move into the right. Oh, that was close. I'm scared. I'm scared. Go, 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 go. That was close. Oh. Wow, this is a tough level. Oh my god, oh my god. I'm pretty sure last night I died on one of them things because I let the... Yes, I did it. I think I died on one of them things because I let the platform touch the lava. Oh, we're sponsored by Nintendogs. Oh, we've got three levels left. This one's sponsored by Big Brain Academy. I've never actually played Big Brain Academy. It always just seemed like a rip-off of uh, brain training. Even though I know it's... It's not really, and it was published by Nintendo, so... Maybe I should check it out one day. If anyone's played Big Brain Academy, let me know if it's any good. Let me know if it's fun or not. I think there was one on the Wii as well. I don't know, I was always kind of, it just felt kind of a bit of a lazy cash grab to me at the time. Which I guess it was, they were cashing in on the fact that brain training became so popular. But whatever, I guess that's what companies need to do if they want to keep being profitable. So I can't complain too much about them trying to make something uh, that would be popular for them. And I presume it did quite well back in the day. I remember seeing it around quite a lot. What am I supposed to do here? Oh, I forget everything's slidey because the whole thing was on ice. Like, even if you warp very slightly, like that, it still takes a few steps to reach a, a complete stop. Ooh, spiders. Spiders out to get me. I feel like I'm missing so much. Ow. Oh. I even tried to get them. That was close, I could have got attacked by that then. Ah! Uh, keep jumping. Can I get up there? No. Can't jump on the scorpions either. Oh well, we made it. That's the end. I wonder what's supposed to be in the treasure chest. Do you think it's like the bytes for the um, images and the trailers coming out of the treasure chest? Who knows? Now we went from an ice cave into another fire cave. I wonder if they actually adjusted the movement speed slightly now that we're back on dry land. Or should I say, we're no longer on ice. No, it seems exactly the same. So all that praise I was giving them for different physics in different environments, it was all a lie. Or it's just a bit laggy. Who knows? Someone knows. Uh oh. I'm finding this 
Ha! I was about to say I was finding this level easier than the other one. Let's go. Oh, how do I end up there now? I'm concentrating now. Ah, oh, I say that, I jumped too soon. I'm not looking forward to the boss with only three, three hearts. Oh my god, I wasn't paying any attention then, at all. Come on, snowman boy. I used to... Yesterday, I was thinking that his name was actually Upixo, but apparently his name is like... Snowboy or something? So I don't know who Upixo is. I haven't been paying any attention to the story. If there even is a story. Ow. Oh no! Go back and get that. My finger's starting to cramp again. I hate the fact that these controls are all on the arrow keys. <laughs> Whose idea was it to make jump an arrow key and not space? Ah, did you hear that? And this is with the better keyboard. Imagine if I had to play all this on my Mac keyboard. I think I'd have to go to hospital with finger damage. <laughs> ah. I'm being impatient because I don't like these levels. Oh, come on. Lost all of it in one go. I wonder if anyone's been able to mod control or support. I hope they improve some of these more straightforward levels if they continue doing the remake for Steam. Hopefully it's not just a one-to-one -one recreation. Although I feel like because of the video they want to get it out as quick as possible to cash in on it so I guess they won't be putting that much new stuff in the game. Which is understandable. Oh no! Come on, there's only three levels left. I can't get much harder than this, surely. Ah. jumped over him then. Almost. Well, I'm still doing a lot better than I was before. I always mess up here. Need to take my time. Ooh, the platform almost touched the lava then. That's a bit dangerous. Shame you don't get anything for... Come on, that's not fair. I couldn't see that far ahead. Yes, I did it. So, last one. Oh, I thought it was three left. Oh, here we go, the last level. Off to a great start. I need that. I need it, badly. No, there was no point in me getting it, because I just lost the heart that I was going to get by picking it up. Oh, there's no point going to get them. That's what I mean about the um, pickups being completely pointless because they don't unlock anything, so there's no point going out of your way to pick them up. You may as well just play through the level as normal and it doesn't make any difference. This level is sponsored by WarioWare Smooth Moves. Kind of a disappointment for me that game was. I picked it up on launch day because I was a huge fan of all the previous WarioWare games, and Smooth Moves just felt way too simple. Like, they didn't even let you um, play the mini games more than one round. 
So even if you wanted to play it in single player and try and get high scores, you just couldn't at all. Which I thought was a really big oversight. And that kind of put me off playing the game at all. I remember I had my friend Jack round from, from school when it came out and we, we were wanting to play through it in multiplayer and we just really weren't having a good time with it. It was way too simple and the multiplayer modes were really lacking. The single player, like I said, was almost non-existent. There was a few nice ideas, but it really did feel just like a glorified tech demo, I suppose. Which I guess is kind of what WarioWare is, but at least the other games actually had some substance to them. I just feel like Smooth Moves didn't do anything to, to be worthwhile being its own full game. And I feel the same with Maiden Wario on the Wii U as well, that was a... There was just a quick cash grab. And there was only like 10 games on that one or so. Ah, oh, come on, that's not fair. Yeah, there was only even like 10 games on WarioWare made in Wario. Which was, you can tell. They really didn't want to put a lot of effort into a Wii U game that they knew wouldn't sell very well. Tough times. I'm sure there's some people out there that enjoy it though, so. I won't be too negative. I did buy it just because I was doing my WarioWare uh, retrospective a while ago. Which did surprisingly well, considering I made that a good few years ago. And I wasn't really that good at making videos back then. So I do appreciate everyone that watched it. How am I supposed to... Oh, right, there we go. How am I supposed to get past him? I quite like this level, it feels like it's actually got a good challenge rather than just being completely unfair, which is how some of the other ones kind of felt. Not sure where I'm supposed to go now though. This feels like a Mega Man level. What the hell? Am I supposed to just go past him? Yep. I'm guessing there was another way to get through there, but I wasn't going to risk it. So, does anything happen when you finished all of them? Yes, there's one left. L picks. I think this is the boss fight. Here we go. Yes. Oh my god, he's got loads more hearts than me. A very Mario World style final boss. Oh, I could have got him there as well. Ow. Oh. Do I just leave the penguins? There's a way it, Oh my god, the blue one goes really fast. Wow. Wow, yeah. This is going to take a while. Concentration time. It's a shame they didn't have any other bosses. Oh, one more. No. Oh. Leave him on the screen. Did I already get a heart? That blue one, man. He's going to... Oh, come on. I've not got the timing down for this. At all. I think if I stay in the middle of the screen, it's a bit safer. Yes. Yeah, I'm just going to try and stay in the middle. Just try and get him while he's swooping. I won't worry too much about it. Yeah, I got him. I'm not going to worry too much about getting him when he comes down the side. Although, I actually did that one okay. Come on, two hearts left. Oh man, come on. Come over here, let me grab that heart. Just in case. He's down to his last life. Oh, uh, no, they're dropping all of the random creatures on me. Ah, oh, so close. He had one heart left. Although I guess he has two left if, if it works the same as how it works for me. So maybe, maybe I shouldn't have been celebrating just yet. Go. Try and leave this purple guy here. Move out of the way. The purple one's the slowest, I think. So blue, blue moves the fastest. And then, ah, oh, I didn't realise he would come down straight where I was. Yep. Come on, get him. Yes. There we go. Two down. I suppose if he appears to the left or the right, I've got just enough time. Turn to face him. Ah, 
I hate that there's no way of telling how far up or down he's going to go when he moves to the side like that. Yes. Where's he going to go? Ah, oh, come on, I thought I'd got him on the top then. That's not fair, that's not fair. I'm doing quite well though, better than I thought I would be. From what I've seen of this boss, everyone made it out to be really difficult. I say that and I'm doing terribly now. Okay, he's gonna go in the middle. Yep. Oh no. Did a low low fly down again. There we go, not too off. We're almost equal. Ah! Oh, come on, that didn't even land on me. Oh no, oh no! I wonder if you can duck under him then. Oh, I jumped too soon. Just top that heart back up. Oh, I didn't mean to pick that second heart up. Oh no. Oh no! That wasn't a JoJo reference. Oh my god. Which side? Ah, I don't know how to know which side he's coming down from either. And that didn't even affect him. That definitely should have. This is getting intense. Got my heart back. He's down to two. Oh. Right on the edge there. Uh, that's not fair, that's not fair. I'm really concentrating now. Uh, slightly too late then. Wow, I actually thought that was going to hurt me. Uh, too late again. I was underneath him. Slightly. Now that's just not fair. Okay, come on. Drop your penguins. <gasps> They're not penguins! No! Close again. I really should have tried to find more heart containers. No! And I get them when I don't want to. No! I don't need them! Ah, oh, that was my own fault for not pressing up when I should have. I only have myself to blame. Ah! Uh, man, maybe I'll fast forward some of this. This fight's going on quite long. No, how do I... Uh, there's no way of telling what direction he's coming from. That's really annoying. Oh, come on. I got him then. Surely. And then. This isn't fair. Come on, this isn't fair. You can't tell where he's coming from. How are you supposed to move? Man, this is not fair at all. I hate how small the hitbox is then. No, not even going to try and get him there. Okay, I'm concentrating now. Sorry if I don't talk too much. We've both got two hearts. I need to remember when he goes down to one. He, um... Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, when he goes down to one, he's just gonna drop these things. Oh my god, here we go. Yes! 
We did it, mission in Snowdrift Land complete. Well, not 100% complete, but we did it, yay. Let's see, ah, there we go, here's the, the credits. Wow, great job, Chubby, Elmpix has been knocked out and the game files are secured. You are the bravest little snowman in video game world. Upixo found their new hero. I still don't know who Upixo is. Are they the people who made the game? But that's extra toxic. There we go. So that's the entire of Upixo in action, Mission in Snowdrift Land. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll put a link in the description so you can go and check out Nick Robinson's incredible documentary on this game if you haven't seen it already. That's it for now though, thank you all so much for watching. If you did watch all the way to the end, let me know in the comments below, that would be really cool to know. And of course, please, please, please check out my main channel, Retro Break, in the comments below as well. I would really love to see some of you over there. So thank you all so much for watching, have a great day, goodbye. Okay, so I actually stopped recording while it was on the credits because I thought that was it, but it says here that there's a special bonus to download. So let's see what that is if it actually lets me download anything. What have we got here? We have a Wii present in three different sizes. We have a Cora Rinpa Panda, a Mario Galaxy icon, Samus, uh, a rabbit from Rayman I suppose, Kirby, and Wario Wears, I mean Wario's moustache and nose. So there you go, thank you all so much for watching.